So, I've returned to RimWorld to continue my quest to understand the darkness and anomaly. As for the part where my whole colony met its untimely end due to a nociosphere, well, I decided it's rewind time and we're gonna go a bit before that disaster. So yeah, this is a continuation of this video, so watch this video first if you want to, but here's a quick summary. A scientist named Richards crash landed on RimWorld while trying to research an ancient monolith. From there, he leads a small colony of the finest minds on this planet against dangerous foes to unlock the secrets of this monolith, no matter how much it tries to fight us. It's good to be back with the knowledge after 300 hours of playing that you can just release arrested colonists to come back to your colony instead of having to re-recruit them. Also, I fixed my ghouls not having a melee stat so they actually know how to fight instead of just wailing at the air hoping for the best. I still need to get rid of this nociosphere because it was destabilizing soon, but I'm gonna be real, that word nearby is doing a lot of heavy lifting because I sent this thing across to the opposite side of the map and it still winds up in my base. Once again, I tried to deploy that thing, and instead of going straight for me, it went right. I was feeling relieved because this took way too many tries, and when it finished its rampage, it just came right back. And I still have to get rid of it soon because it almost immediately starts destabilizing. Since Randy loves me so much, he sends a shambler assault while that sphere is still on cooldown for another day and a half. They aren't much of a threat, but they don't have the decency to go through my kill box and break down my walls instead. This leads to Randy getting another really cool idea with the Nociosphere still on cooldown and my walls breached. Why not just send a large group of flesh beasts to rush me? I'm here with my pants around my ankles and I gotta fight these demons off. Some sacrifices needed to be made so I could position my colonists somewhere good and kill those flesh beasts. But these cavern raids were getting too irritating for me and I wanted them to stop. I remembered there was supposed to be something I could find in this cave that would allow me to permanently shut this hole. Joyce led the two ghouls to search every corner of the cave for something. They quickly found a really nice shield belt, and after searching all night, the ghouls could report back... There's nothing. I was about to give up until Will heard some squirming sounds behind some flesh, which turned out to be hiding a abomination called a dreadmeld. And looking at it, I could tell that thing was way too dangerous for me right now, so I was gonna leave it for later. A while back ago, a strange obelisk landed and we'd been using it for a source of dark research, without really knowing what it was. And suddenly, while studying it, Richard feels himself phasing out of reality. Soon, he is transported into some sort of room, and upon reading some writing on the floor, it is clear that this is a maze that he needs to find his way out of. He wanders around the maze looking for clues and loot, hopefully avoiding the alleged monster that's in here too. Richard finds one of the victims, who was kind enough to leave some food around to keep Richards going. Sev also left a hint to where the exit was, and seeing where the door to the exit is and where Sev died, that's kinda embarrassing. You know Sev's gotta be watching from the afterlife, like... Richard uses the obelisk in the maze and leaves. The obelisk near our colony also disappears, but we get some normalcy in the colony for three days. Then we see a strange corpse that resembles Joyce just pop out of nowhere. It's not even doing anything, it's just lying there, menacingly. But I guess Joyce is getting her mind messed up by the corpse being around, cause for some reason, seeing your dead body around is not great for your mental health. I feel she's being a little dramatic though by having full on mental breakdowns and putting that corpse on the dining room table. Imagine working all day and you come back for dinner and see your friend put their naked dead body on the dinner table. I'd be so done with life at that point. Time was running out and I needed to ditch that nociosphere again. So once more, I throw it on the other side of the map and hope for the best. 
Things were looking fine since it's mainly after random animals while it's super far away, but then tragedy strikes when a shaman merchant decides to visit. I feel bad because they walked into this thing with no way to prepare. In a few seconds, half the caravan was wiped out with the rest running away, and while you know, thoughts and prayers for the fallen, couldn't help but notice all that fine loot they dropped. The whole colony, of course, felt very bad about this. I'm sorry. A woman named Zaitsev approached our camp, asking to join, and we found out this woman was literally perfect. She was beautiful and talented at everything, basically the Giga Stacy. And although she may have some unknown baggage, how could I turn such a queen away? When it came to dealing with infestation, she made it stupidly easy to destroy them when the ghouls were body blocking for me. Joyce's dead corpse had one benefit for the colony at least. It let us learn the imbued death refusal ritual, allowing a colonist to meet death and then tell him to F off. Since Richards is the main character, I have him go through the ritual, and although it does cost him some of his overall experience, it went well enough that the difference was negligible. We get a weird request from the Imperium, where they want to dump some strange cargo on us, and I accept since I can't refuse that Glitter World medicine. That cargo ended up being a Revenant spine, and once we captured it, we learned some interesting new texts we could research, and had enough knowledge of the darkness to fully awaken the monolith. But I was gonna wait on that, because I knew I wasn't exactly ready to deal with all the chaos that would bring, and there were other things I needed to do first. The next day, the pit rumbles again, and I see a lot of flesh beasts emerge from it, and I start to think it's gonna be a real struggle for my colony. As those beasts approached, members of a visiting caravan got involved in the fight to help out, but some of them have some very special tactics. Yeah, I'm gonna charge an enemy that can only melee attack with a bow. What can go wrong? Literal negative survival instincts. It's amazing they made it to adulthood. He's lucky I had some spare medicine, but he really doesn't deserve it. But with the Flesh Feast raids getting bigger and bigger, I figure it's time to gear up and kill those demons for good. The gang is about to go into the cave to kill the Dreadmeld, but Cody just has to have a mental breakdown then and ruining it. I wait for the next day so everyone is in a fine mood and go into the cave. The idea was for Cody and Joyce to shoot it and lure it back towards the rest of the group near the entrance in case somebody had to flee briefly for safety. The tricky thing about fighting the Dreadmeld is that it has super healing so you have to keep attacking it, and when you damage it enough it will fling more flesh beasts at you. So this fight requires a lot of precise micro of your colonists. We do manage to kill the Drenmeld, destabilizing the cave, but also causing it to spew a bunch more flesh beasts on top of us that I can't fight. So I just tell everyone to get out of the cave. It really sucks to leave those shards behind, but I was not beating all of this. My two good doctors are struggling to come back. I had to crutch on Tweak's magic healing powers for Joyce and while it worked to heal her, she got a bit extra with a new tentacle on her body. As the colonists rush to get Zaitsev and Richards back home, the Undercave is completely collapsing, and now we will never hear anything from this pit again. After accomplishing such a daring mission, I have Richards give a speech to motivate the colony, and after an hour of talking, he only motivates them to want to go to bed. It was so bad that he gave himself and two other people gut worms. When springtime arrived, we ran out of food. Well, decent food. I didn't want the colonists to eat twisted meat, since they get really upset about that. So I did a ritual to draw animals. I ended up drawing more than animals, though. Some cultists came over to start a hate chant and drive us insane. Now, I don't want the colonists to go through this for too long, so I have to move fast to silence them. I had to prioritize hunting the Mega Slots first. I set up a big hunting party, and I'm able to kill most of the Mega Slots, setting me up with enough meat until my crops grow. Everyone is on edge after that hunt due to the hate chanting, so I get all hands on deck to go after the cultist. Zaitsev is a talented shot with her bolt action rifle, and takes two of them out, 
causing them to cancel the chant and attack us directly. But the damage was already done. The cultist broke Zaitsev and she felt the urge to liberate one of our captured entities. So while everyone else is in a fight for their lives to stop the cultist, Zaitsev makes the smartest decision in her life to release the Revenant. And when I see that thing go invisible and open my doors, I'm just like, welp, I'm screwed. We successfully held off the cultists, but I have no idea where that revenant thing is. The cultists were nice enough to drop some good guns for us at least, and give us another promising candidate for ghoulification. But suddenly, the revenant appears and attacks one of our visitors. They try to fight it off, but fail, and the victim is caught in a hypnosis leaving them in a nearly vegetative state until the Revenant is killed. I had no clue where it went afterwards, and now we gotta be on extra alert because anywhere out here, we can see this predator appear and send our minds into the sunken place. So, this was a great time for me to create another ghoul, and for marriage too, I guess. Cody had to get a ring on that tentacle before she got sent to the Shadow Realm. The Revenant is very patient and picks its next opportunity carefully. Seeing Tweak by herself outside the base, it rushes her down. There was barely any time for people to come to her help before Tweak was mind broken and it ran off happily, accomplishing its mission. Randy dropped the easiest psychic ship ever on me later because when I damaged it, there were no mechs inside. I still managed to have a friendly fire incident during its destruction, but that turned out to be a blessing because on his way back to get healed, Cody heard the Revenant. I assembled everyone for this great opportunity to reverse the roles. Once I found it, the colonists let loose on the demon, but despite the damage, it was able to make a getaway. The Revenant was clearly upset about getting jumped because the next night, as people were getting ready for bed, it emerged to attack us where we slept. At least in the center of our base, we could get everyone together to fight it off. But despite our combined efforts, it hypnotized Richards and was making a getaway. I remembered that for some reason, despite not being able to fight, Cameron carried one of my disruptor packs, so he threw a flare down. This stunned the beast long enough for the gang to rally again, but the Revenant still kept running. It even managed to go invisible again, but using the tracks it was leaving, I figured out where the thing might be hiding. Finally, the Revenant was killed. Tweak and Richards woke up from their sleep, and I felt so happy and relieved. We are definitely not going to leave its spine around to risk it being released again, so I was going to implant it into Richard so he gets its invisibility powers. I've had my colony bordering an ancient danger the entire game, and with how far we've come, it's time to open up and see what's inside. Fortunately, it was just some mediocre mechs and small insects. I don't care about any of the people in the cryo chambers because our home is full, but they at least had a few things worth taking. I mean, these people are literally dying. What are they gonna do? Stop me? A weapons trader came by later, allowing us to buy even better weapons to prepare for this final challenge of the campaign. I felt like we were ready, so Richards walked towards the Void Monolith and awakened it, challenging the darkness to bring everything it has. Our land is blanketed in unnatural darkness, and two void structures appeared, challenging us to come over and activate them to progress to the next phase. We'd only have to get through all the monsters they'd throw at us first. Everyone had to channel their inner Doom Slayer and lock in to fight the first wave of demons that came at us. It finally dawned on me that having one of my main power sources so close to the kill zone was actually not a good idea. After a short rest, I gathered a party to awaken the first void structure. Although two metal horrors were guarding it, the ghoul trio was excellent bait while the people with guns actually killed them. Richards activated the first void structure and this soon triggered a bunch of nearby entities to attack me. With most people over here, the main entrance was looking really bad. Poor defenseless Cameron probably looking at this like... Oh god! We're gonna die! Luckily, the entities separate to smash up my base, giving the main group time to mow down a more manageable amount of demons, then moving to the other side of the base to clean up the stragglers. 
I wanted to feel real happy about surviving all of that, but I would need to do this several more times. Getting to the second void structure was significantly easier without metal horrors in the way, and Richards activated it, triggering the second phase of the challenge. When the next structures arrive, the whole map will go pitch black, and we will only be safe in direct light. As for the next entity attacked, I was way more prepared. Although the devourer jumping in and trying to eat Will completely surprised me. But nobody was gonna get bored on my watch. The colony made its final preparations for the second phase. The home zone was adjusted, corpses were cleared, and new turrets were installed to hold the line. When the next structures landed, we were lucky to have two of them spawn so close. But one of them was right in the middle of my farms. My shiny new turrets didn't stand a chance against the metal horrors, and they did a number on my ghouls too. Activating the structure in my farm caused another noctal rush, and it's starting to feel like World War Z with all the corpses I'm piling up here. The second structure was a breeze to activate, with it being so close to my base, and I thought maybe I could just go for the final structure and keep this going, but another entity attack quickly put me in my place. But this one was really weak. Not even the threat of being bored is enough to stop us from our mission. The group gets together and uses flares to light the way to the last structure. On the way there, we are ambushed by more entities trying to stop us. The colonists managed to remain unharmed, but sadly, we lost Rod to a metal horror. We were so close to the final structure, I had to keep the party going, while Cameron picked up Rod's body to revive him. After the final structure was activated, I had to wait for the final transformation of the monolith, while another wave of entities streamed in towards us. The monolith reached its final form, and fully awakened and I had to gather the gang for one last push to get Richards to interact with the Void. I tried to get Richards there quickly, but the entities moved in fast to stop us. Poor Rod died again to metal horrors, and at this point, he just wasn't meant for the ghoul life like Will and Riku were, so I'm not reviving him again. His sacrifice was a cheap cost to get Richards to interact with the activated monolith which teleported him into a completely alien room with a sphere of dark energy. Richards knew what he had to do. After two years on this planet, Richard had reached the end and could communicate directly with the Void. When it offered its power to him, he jumped at the chance. This triggers an actual ending, and wow, Ludian really went all out for this one. I'm guessing all the budget went into designing the monster, so when it was time to make the ending, Tenen was just like this. Richards returns to reality a completely different man. The Void has given him gifts like more uses of death refusal, so he has four lives now. The Void also made him more autistic, but also gave him super healing, and he doesn't even have to sleep or relax. With his other abilities, he is a very dangerous man, and I needed to test his abilities. I had Zaitsev make an assault rifle for him, and Richards would set out to a nearby mining camp with Joyce and the ghouls as backup, just in case. When they arrived, Richards took the lead to start the fight against these attacking. The first thing he did was use his void terror power to force one of them to imagine gay porn and took him out of the fight. His friends tried to rush Richards, but Richards could go invisible and shoot them from behind. The attacking were no problem for us to take care of. And as the last one in the camp tries to crawl for his life, he sees Richards approach him. In his last moment, the Atakan doesn't see a man anymore. This concludes my story of Anomaly in Wormworld. Richards and the colony went through a lot to get here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you've made it this far, you're obligated to leave a like, or Richards will come to your house and force you to imagine your grandma showering, so choose wisely. Also, much appreciation to my alumni and Patreon for generously funding my supernatural ambitions. Your support there really motivates me to make these quality videos for y'all. Anyways, I got plenty more RimWorld content for you guys to enjoy. Subscribe to see more good stuff in your feed, and I hope to see y'all again another day.